What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can do some deep engravings with color just like this one. Now for this I will be using the Monport GA100 fiber laser. So if you have this model or one very similar, be sure to follow along on all the steps on how to create this. Now the beauty of this is that you don't need to do any post processing or cleanup afterwards. This is how it comes right off of the laser. So there's no cleanup, no wire brushing or anything like that. All I did was just take a rag right afterwards just to wipe off all the little residue that may accumulate onto it. But let's jump right in, let's head over to the computer, and let's get started. Alright, so here we are over inside of Lightburn, and I'll try and keep this as easy as possible for you guys can all follow along. But let's just get started and jump right into this. So first, let's just go up into File and we'll create New. And we'll just start from scratch so we have a fresh project to work on. And always make sure that you have your laser selected. I'll be using the Monport GA100, which is a 100 watt fiber laser. So first, what we're going to do is I'm going to drag in the image that I'm going to be using for this. And since this will be on a dog tag, I created this. And this is the dog tag, and this will be what I'll be engraving. So first, I'm going to select this and put this on layer 0, just so I kind of keep this in order on what I'm going to be doing. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to trace image and everything looks okay. I can zoom in with the mouse wheel, see what it'll look like, and I'll just click okay. And now if I set this to fill, you can see that this is what it's doing, but this isn't technically what I want. So I'm gonna go back to line. I'll select all of this again. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna ungroup this. And now I can select this outer box and just delete that. So now if I go into fill, I can see that this is what it's going to be filling, but this is technically not right either. So I'll go back into line, and I'll delete this outer one, since that's the full dog tag, and this is technically all that I want. And now if I go into fill, you can see that this is what I'm actually looking for. All this black will be engraved, and anything that's white or transparent isn't going to be cut at all. So now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this a few times, that way I have all the layers that I will be using when I'm cutting, doing the cleaning passes, doing the polishing passes, and things like that. So make sure everything's selected. I'll right click, and you can click Duplicate or Control D on the keyboard if you want to do it that way. But I won't be using any shortcuts in this, just so you can all easily follow along. So again, I'll click on Duplicate, and I'll set this to Layer 1. And now I'm just going to hide this in the meantime. I'll set this to Fill as well. And I'm going to do the same exact thing again, make sure it's all highlighted, duplicate, and now I'll set it to layer 2. I'm just going to hide this one. I'll go back to fill. I'm going to do it again. I'll right click, click duplicate. Now I'll set it that one to 3. And I'll duplicate this one more time. And I'll set this to 4. So now I have one, two, three, four, five layers that I'll be needing to get this all set up. And as you can see, if I hide one, show the other ones, they're all exactly the same, and they're all in the same spot. Now if at any time you do need to move these around, you can just show every single one of these, take them, move them around, and now if you hide one, it's still in the same spot and that they won't be moved. But I'm going to put that right back into the center. Again, select all of them, click on P on the keyboard, and that will bring them all back into the middle. So now I want to hide all of these, except for this very first one. And this one's actually going to be the deep engraving. And I want this to be an image. I don't want it to just be a fill. Now, I could just keep this as a fill because this is just black and white and it is just a vector file. But if you were using a grayscale image that has different shades, you would need to have this as an image. So I'm just going to convert this to an image. That way it'll be easier for you guys to remember as well. So I'll just right click on this first one selected and I'll convert it to a bitmap. And I'm just gonna bring the value up a little bit and I could go high, I don't really need to, just enough to where the detail is going to be basically the same as all the other ones. So probably right around there should be just fine, 1300. So we'll just click OK. And now I also want this to be flat black. So if I click on right click on this, I will adjust the image and just bring this brightness all the way down to well, negative 70, I guess. 
and but that makes it all black and now I can click OK and now here you can see that this is just an image and not in a fill or line mode. So I'll bring this back up to the top and I'll set this back to zero zero again. I moved it back down and now we have zero one two three four. So now most of these are basically finished for what I'm going to need. So if I hide this one when I do a cleaning pass, it's going to be using the same image, but I will just be using a fill as I'm just going to go a cleaning pass over this. So that one I can leave the same. The next one's going to be a polishing pass, which is again the same. And so I don't need to adjust anything on here. But now we have to come into the colors. So I'm going to adjust this for temporarily and just click on line. And I don't want it to do the background this time I just want to do the actual cross itself and this line that goes around it. So if I take this one, just this outer ring, and I delete that one, now if I go back to fill, I have technically the inside of the cross that will be engraved. So if I show another layer, you can see now it's no longer white or filled in since it was transparent before. So this one I would do bluish color, so I'll put a blue on top of this once it's deep engraved. And this last one will be another color, but it will be doing like a goldish background. So I'm going to leave this exactly how it is as well. So now I can go into my media library. And for this first one, I'm just going to rename this. And I'll just rename this Deep for Deep Engraving. I'll click OK. I'll move this over a little bit so you can see it. The second one's going to be a cleaning pass. So I'll just type clean. This third one's going to be a polishing pass, so I'll just name this Polish. No, well, not Polish, I just capitalized it. And this next one for the actual cross, this is going to be blue. And then for this final color, this is going to be like a goldish, so I'll just type in gold for this one. And this way I know exactly what's going on. I'll run this one first, this one second, third, fourth, and now I'll run that one last. And now for the settings, I do already have these all in my material library. So all I have to do is click on one of them, since this will be the image, make sure it's selected, and I'll just click Assign. I can come down to the next one. This one will be the cleaning pass, so I'll click on Clean, and I'll click Assign. The next one after this will be the polishing pass, so I'll click on Polish, and I'll click Assign. After that, I'll be doing the blue. So I can come down under Colors, I'll click on Blue, and the last one will be the Gold Pass, so I'll click on Gold, and assign that one as well. So now I have all these all set up, and they're all set to Output. I'm not going to do it like that, I'm just going to turn off all of these while I run it. Um, but I'll actually show you what's going on first, so I'll go through each of these settings as well. So you can follow in along since you won't have my material library. So this first one, which is the Deep Engraving, this is going to be the image, which is 3D Slice, so make sure you're on 3D Slice mode. As for the speed, I'm running this at 2,000 millimeters per second. I do have the frequency set to 100, which is typically higher than I normally do my deep engravings. Normally I have it around 65 to 75, because if you think about it, like sandpaper, the, the lower the number, is going to be like the rougher the grit you're using. So if you're using a higher frequency, it's like a smoother, softer sandpaper. So I am going to run this at a max power of 80. I'm keeping this a little bit lower power than normally. I don't want to be destroying the metal while I'm engraving it. I want it to be like really thin, smooth lines and passes going over it each time. And now this will take a little bit longer than it normally would take if I'm doing a deep engraving like on a coin or something, but that's because I, I won't have to do any cleanup afterwards. It'll already be ready to go when I'm done. So the speed at 2000, the frequency at 100, max power of 80, and a Q pulse of 200. The line interval I am setting to 0 0.025. I'm just using a zero scan angle. I will be using a cleanup pass, which I'll go over in a second, and the number of passes 256 for this and fill all shapes at once. And now if I go to the cleanup pass, after every eight passes I'm doing a cleanup pass, so I set the frequency a little bit higher to 130. The speed I bumped up quite a bit to 5000. I am using a power of 65, so a little bit lower than the 80. And the line interval is 0 
and this just kind of goes really quickly over it, which ends up leaving pretty much like a white surface finished over it. And I do have the scan angle at 90. So I'll click OK. So now the next one on this cleaning pass, if I come into this one, this is basically doing what those that last cleaning pass did for the deep engrave after every eight layers. I'm just running this one additional time, but all the rest of the settings are the same. If I go back into here, you can see that I really haven't changed anything. So we'll click OK. And then the one after that, this will be the polishing pass. And for this one, I will be using a speed of 3000. The frequency I dropped all the way down to 20. The Q pulse is at 200 and the line interval is 0 0.01. And I will run this three to five times. Typically I run it at least three times. You can run it a few more if you want, but three should be just fine. And the power is set to 25, line interval 0 0.01, and a scan angle of 12. This way it just slightly changes the angle of it every time it passes it. And next we'll do the blue color. So that will just be the outline of it, of the cross. I'll click on that. So for this, I'll be using a speed of 800, frequency of 500, a Q pulse of five, and a power of 40, with a line interval of 0 0.0015, and just one pass over it. And the gold is going to be 1200 speed, 500 frequency, five for the Q pulse, power of 45, with a line interval of 0 0.002. And again, just one pass. Now instead of clicking OK and clicking on each one, you can just go in here and, and click on each one, which makes it a little bit easier. But I'm just double clicking on these just to kind of show you and make it a little bit more simple for you guys to follow along with. So that's basically it, and I'm pretty much all set up. So now all I need to do is just send this over to the laser, get this all set up, and we'll start engraving. So now that it's all finished, here is how it turns out. As you can see, it does have a nice goldish color in the background with the bluish color on top of the cross with the silver. So it does give it a nice contrast. I did do a few other ones so you can kind of see the difference. This one I did pretty much the same exact way, only I didn't put the background onto it. So that's kind of how it looks before, just that kind of darkish silver color. I went ahead and did this one with my dog's name with a little bone inside of the bone. And I also did a smaller one with a flower, as you can see kind of the colors onto it. And that's how it turns out. So again, there's no post-processing whatsoever. Right off of the laser, that's exactly how it comes out. I just wiped it down with a rag and that was it. Now I do want to reiterate again that when you are doing the color on top of the cross or the background you will have to adjust your focus by what the depth of of how deep you got it engraved so this is around one millimeter deep so i just lowered it one millimeter just to make sure that the focus was on it and not above it and then for the cross on top i just moved the focus back up and set that back to normal now it's always a good idea to run some color tests prior to the job that you're doing. That way you can kind of make sure you're getting the color right. I just chose these colors just because it kind of had the most contrast and difference so you can easily see what the colors were. But you can use any of the colors in your color palette from any of the testing that you're doing. But it's always definitely a good idea to run some tests prior. And I would also recommend using some kind of a jig or just manipulating the little tie downs a little bit. That way you can easily put the piece in place and if you do need to move it or do any cleanup, if you'd like to prior to doing the colors afterwards, you can easily put it right back into place. And that way you're not worried about trying to get it exactly centered or anything like that. So definitely make some kind of a jig or just manipulate the pieces to where it actually will slide right into place and you won't have to move it. 
Now again, I am using the Monport GA100 fiber laser, so I will put a link down in the description on where you can pick that up along with a discount code to save you a couple extra bucks as well if you are interested in purchasing this. Now if you have a different machine or a lower wattage or something like that, you will probably have to adjust some of your settings just to be able to match the settings that I'm using. But that's going to be it for this video, everybody, and I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the bell. Get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.